German short rows are one of our favorite methods for working partial rows in your knitting. And so today I'm going to show you how to do the German short row technique. I have a few inches of knitted fabric, stockinette knitted fabric here that I've worked in this yellow yarn. And I'm going to be using the blue yarn here to show you what the partial rows, the short rows look like. And then once we complete those, I'll continue knitting in the yellow so that you can see exactly where and how the short rows affect the finished fabric. Starting our first short row from the right side, I'm going to join in my contrast yarn. And so what I'm going to do here is knit across the row, but I'm not going to go all the way. I'm going to stop about five stitches short. This would be the point in my pattern where it tells me to stop and turn around. Okay, now I'm here. So I've worked almost an entire row and I have five stitches on my left side that I am not going to work. And I'm going to turn, turn the work here. When you turn to go back, you're going to slip the first stitch, take the yarn and bring it over top of the stitch. This is like making a yarn over if you were making lace. You're pulling up on the yarn. You can kind of see that that yellow stitch gets pulled up and over. It looks like two legs of the stitch sitting on the needle. And it's really important as you work the next stitch that you keep a nice amount of tension on this stitch. That's going to make a nice clean short row in your finished fabric. So I'm pulling up. I go around my needle so that I'm back in front. So I've just made essentially a yarn over. And I'm going to snug it up before I go and I'm going to start purling back. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to purl a partial row. I'm going to purl to within five stitches of the end of my row. So I've got five stitches left on my left knee. I'm going to just snug this stitch up where I joined my yarn in. So you can see I've got five stitches there. And again, I'm going to turn my work. You can kind of see now over here, I've got this little double-legged stitch here, yellow on top, blue on bottom. And now my yarn is in the back because I turned it around. Do sort of the same idea. So I'm going to bring the yarn to the front, slip the first stitch, and again, really tighten this. And I'm going to pull it up and over the needle, go into that next stitch to knit and knit it, making sure that first stitch is nice and tight. My cable in the way here. And continue working back. And you can see, again, that I have this kind of double, double stitch here. That's what it looks like, that yarn over and the stitch that I slipped. So I'm working back across. I'm going to do one more set. And this time I'm going to work to within four stitches of my turned stitch from the last row, which is pretty commonly how it's done in a pattern. You're working them staggered. So I've got four blue stitches now, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn my work, slip first stitch, tighten it, bring it up and over the needle. So I'm coming back to the front. I've got this little yarn over here. Make sure that stitch is nice and tight before I go on, and then purl back. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to work to within four stitches of the previous wrap that I did from the row before. Oops, I went one too far. All right, so now I've got four blue stitches before that, that wrapped yarn over stitch right there. Do one more time, turn the work again. Now from the right side, I'm going to bring my yarn to the front, slip that first stitch, snug it up, bring it up and over, and start knitting again. And again, as I make that first stitch, I got that little yarn over there. And now if I stop and lay that work flat, you can kind of see that I've got a wrapped, little wrapped double stitch right there, and then another one four stitches over. 
And the same thing over here. Easy to see the first one. This is where the yellow ends. And then another one here. So now I'm going to complete my row. I'm going to work all the way to the end with my blue, which means I'm going to encounter these two wrapped, turned stitches. And then I'm going to work all the way back with the blue and encounter those ones on the way back and show you what you do when you incorporate those short road sections into your work. So I'm working from the right side, knitting across. And you'll know when you hit that turning stitch because you've got this kind of funky double stitch on your needle here. And you're going to think of this as, it's not two stitches, it's the stitch that you slipped and the yarn over that you made when you slipped that stitch. You're going to think of them like two stitches and go in as if to knit two together. And you're going to knit them together like that and slide them both off. I like to just tug the yarn a little bit right there to keep it nice and tight. And I'll have one more of those coming up here. So I'm knitting right up to that wrap. And again, here it is. Got the two legs and the two legs there. I'm going to go right into the center, knit those two together, slide them both off, and complete my row. That's how you work those wraps from the right side. You're knitting. You can kind of see right now that those short rows just end right in the middle of the fabric. Nice and clean. Love that. Now we're going to turn it back and do the same thing, but from the purl side. I'm going to show you how to work those wraps from the purl side. So I'm going to start here. All right, so here we go. Two more stitches, and I'm hitting that wrap from the wrong side. So here again, I have somewhat of a double stitch on my needle here, and I'm going to go through the two of these like a purl two together. Wrap, purl those two and slide them both off. And I'm going to do that one more time. So here I am again at that wrapped stitch. I'm going to go in between the two. So you see we've got those two legs riding my right needle right there as if to purl them together, slide them off, and then I'm going to purl to the end of the row, thus completing the section of short rows. Salvage stitch here. So let's take a look. Tighten these up. So you can see already that I have more, I have a, a higher fabric of the blue in the center, because that's where I had all those rows worked, and that it sort of slopes down off towards the side where I made my shaping. All right, so I've finished knitting some full rows with my yellow yarn. I knit six rows above my short rows so that you can start to see how the short rows have affected the fabric. I've essentially put um, six rows of knitting here that are making the center of my swatch six rows longer than my side. So I have two, you can see two rows of knitting on the sides in the blue, and a small section here where there's four rows, and a section here in the center where there's six. And that has to do with the turning points that I made here, 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 and here. The nice thing about German short rows is how clean and closed those turning points are. Uh, the most common way that you see short rows presented in patterns is the wrap and turn method, and a lot of knitters have a hard time, including myself, making that a clean, invisible way to do short rows. So the German short rows is a superior uh, alternative to that. And one thing I also wanted to share with you is how would you sub in German short rows in a pattern that is telling you to do wrap and turn. It's very, very easy. Work the pattern exactly as it tells you to do, and when you get to that point where it says stop in the middle of the row, wrap and turn, instead of wrapping and turning the traditional way, work one additional stitch and then do the ger German short row as I've shown you here. And also then you're going to turn around and go back when you hit that point in the pattern where it says wrap and turn, 
work one additional stitch, either knitting or purling, depending on what side of the fabric you're on, and then do the German short row instead. And that's as, it's as simple as that. That's how you can make the substitution and improve the quality of your knitted fabric. I also wanted to show you the wrong side of the fabric. So you can see here, 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 and here, there's just a little blip in the fabric, and that is the wrap that we made over the needle. And because of the way that we worked that wrap when we closed them, it kicks it out to the wrong side of the fabric. So you do have a more visible uh, presentation of the short row on the wrong side of the fabric, but on the right side, which is the public side, you don't have any sort of vis visible bump or gap in the fabric, which is one of the reasons we love this German short row technique so much.